What? I opened up um, Variety as I do every day. And I'm reading, and lo and behold, who do I see? Who do I see? An article in Variety magazine here in Hollywood? That's right. A congratulations. Uh, not a, Well, I'm congratulating them, but it was Raj and DK and Variety talking about they had a five-year deal with Netflix. So congratulations, guys. They have an exclusive five-year deal with Netflix now for their stuff. Netflix India? Just said Netflix. That's who's doing Shahid's next series. Correct. Believe, right? Yep. So I wonder if that's going to be a Netflix one. If it's Raj and DK, yeah, uh, they're uh, going to be exclusive with them for the next five years. He has a, uh, a new film coming out, um, and it's called Blood Daddy. I like it. I like it already. <laughs> so I changed his name in my phone. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid rank sheets of corporate. <laughs> I'm Rick. Hey, Blood Daddy. <laughs> hey, Blood Daddy. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Anyways, this is not about your head. Uh, this is about 10 surprising facts about Northeast India. How far northeast? That northeast. But they, we've seen the uh, FTD facts. We've seen the, yeah. a couple of his videos. But obviously, love like learning above new stuff. Above the uh, yeah, yeah. I'm guessing. Around that part. The, the upper... Like the other side of Bangladesh. Let's watch the video and find out, shall we? Mm -hmm. It's a land of diversity and with many different kinds of people belonging to different races, cultures, and religions. So it's but natural that people belonging to such diverse cultures would also look a little different. However, people from the northeastern part of India have as we have said look all many times. Together. Now the question is, why is that, and what are some of the facts surrounding Northeast India? Hey guys, my name is Leroy Kenton, and welcome back to another episode. Hi, right, Leroy Kenton. Before, What's up? now we're just adding it to our ten facts episode series. And before I begin, leave a like on this video if you love learning. And for those of you who are new here to FTD Facts, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss any of our future episodes. All right, so. Let's jump into the facts now. Northeastern oh. India comprises of eight states. There's Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram, Manipur, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Tripura, and Sikkim. Now, northeastern India shares its, it's borders with Myanmar, Bhutan, Bengal, right? China, yeah. as well as Nepal and Tibet. Now, all these countries comprise of people of almost the same ethnic group. But even within Northeast India, the population of Northeast Indians is made up of many different races, mainly the Mongoloids, Indo-Aryans, and Astroloids, or Austric and Dravidians. Now I know that in today's modern world, the term Mongoloid is seen as something derogatory and many use it as an insult for people with certain forms of handicap. However, for this episode, if I use the term mongoloid, I do not mean anything offensive at all. Canceled. It's just for the sake of clarity, and I'm referring to the original use of the term. More specifically, like as faggot. the term relates to people of okay. East Asia. The original term Asia, is not derogatory. It's a bundle of sticks. that the mongoloid race used to live in means something different now. Asia during the Paleolithic age. Not originally. In fact, some anthropologists see modern Chinese people as second secondary descendants of mongoloids and since people in northeast india are also descendants of the mongoloid people you can see why all of these races share similar physical features another point to look at is while the original settlers in northeast india were the mongoloids the indo-aryan and other groups arrived later you can see that there's a huge dominance of the mongoloid element in the population of northeast india also in some ancient texts the northeastern regions belonged to tribes who spoke languages from the tibeto burman family then in other parts of the northeast there was a race of people who reached myanmar from the yunnan region of china also the metis tribe of manipur state descended from the tartars who migrated from china in the Too many terms already. Centuries. My brain is so mush. In short, there are more than 200 oh, wow. fascinating tribes in Northeast India alone who at some point in history 
migrated from neighboring countries. The neighboring countries, specifically China, Myanmar, and Bhutan, and they all came in search of more fertile land, or to find river valleys, or to simply just invade the land. Now I got a very interesting point here. Other than the racial differences, which I will get into very shortly, there is a whole tribal, non-tribal duality recognized by the Constitution of India that gives certain benefits to the many tribal communities in the northeastern part of India. Now, this was to help them catch up with the rest of society in educational standards, as well as standards of living in general. Now, it's because of reasons like these that Northeasterners are often non-recognized and even misrecognized, or even thought of by the wider Indian society as foreigners, and they're seen as people who came from such places like China, Nepal, Thailand, or even Japan, and some call this withholding the Indianness from the Northeastern Indian people, which causes people to discriminate against and marginalize them. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk a little bit about the issues that Northeastern Indians face a little bit more. So pretty much the people of the Northeastern part of India are often even seen differently by the people from other parts of India, like I mentioned. Now while it's true that Northeastern Indians have mongoloid features that give them unique features on a whole, many people have assumptions about them. And the biggest problem that the people of other parts of the country have is that there's just very limited knowledge about the Northeast. In fact, most of the decision makers sitting in Delhi, they will often forget this very part of the country. Also, if you think that when Indians from other states travel to different states, that they're treated differently over there, so it makes sense that Northeasterners would be treated differently when they travel outside of their states. Well, think again. Now, there are a few complications that I'm gonna talk about right now, which should give you a better picture of the problems here. It's pretty much human nature. It's like burnt in, hardwired in our DNA to look at people who don't actually look like us or talk like us in a different way. So think about it though. How do you develop understanding? Well, that's through communication. Now, how do you develop communication? Well, that's by speaking the same or similar language. And you can say that the general perception among a large portion of North Indians is that the Northeastern Indians are really unapproachable. Now, people from Maharashtra, Gujarat, as well as Bihar, India, can kind of get by because their languages are similar enough to Hindi to reduce the language barrier. A lot of Indian people and Northeastern people face problems because of this, because their languages just aren't that similar. There is also a geographical barrier. Many people point out that Northeast India used to actually be separated from the rest of India, and they started being connected to the Indian mainland not too long ago. Also, transport to and from the northeastern part of India is still not very developed. There are only a few trains and even fewer flights. As shown in the image that you'll see on your screen right now, there is a physical divide between the rest of India and northeastern states. Also remember that North India used to be pretty fragmented earlier on, but it got connected more easily because they were on the plains and enjoyed some cultural intermixing. And then when a ruler would occupy the region, they would then bring about their laws as well as their culture. And this created a cultural similarity in the region. Now due to North India's geographical position, a kind of barrier was created when the cultural assimilation couldn't take place between the Northeastern states and the rest of India. There's also a big issue when it comes to stereotyping. Now did you know that when the Arabs began trading in India, that they started calling anyone who lived on the east side of the river Indus as Hindu. So back then, the river Indus used to be called the river Sindhu, but because the Arabs couldn't pronounce the S sound, they started pronouncing it with an H. Hence, we eventually got the name Hindustan. And like most Mongoloid-featured people, there's that term Mongoloid again, uh, they're referred to as Asians, and yes, while they are all Asians, everyone isn't Chinese. But because it's easier to the human mind to classify them all together, people think that they're all the same people. So in the same way, a lot of Indian people stereotype Northeast Indians too. For fact number two, I want to share some information about the underrepresentation in society and media. 
So the northeastern states aren't very densely populated in the first place. A fraction of them come to North India for education or looking for jobs. Compared to the massive crowds of people of North Indians, Northeast Indians are statistically a minority. Mainland Indian society just hasn't seen enough of Northeastern Indians, even after they started migrating to North India. We see Black, Asian, and Latin representation in African sitcoms, but nothing of the sort when it comes to Indian television. They aren't very well represented in Hollywood <laughs> either. Take, for example, Priyanka Chopra's movie, Mary Combe. Now, the movie is based on the life of the Olympic Indian boxer, Mary Combe. So nothing like her. Who was from yeah, the state looks nothing of like Hannaford. her. Now, instead of casting a Northeast Indian person, producers casted a not at all Northeast <laughs> Indian looking Priyanka Chopra. And this is usually the big problem when it comes to representation of Northeast Indians in mainstream media in that they aren't even represented at all. And the final thing I want to share is this. So just remember that the northeastern region of India is a very sensitive one, almost like Kashmir. Now, they have feuds with China over the borders of Arunachal Pradesh, and the Seven Sister States have been plagued by a lot of violence. Now, the feud with India, as well as the rise of separatist groups in the Northeast, as well as the retaliation by the Indian Army, mistrust, loss of faith, all of that, those have been prevailing in these regions for decades. Decades. And the more that the mainstream Indians don't do to fix the racist attitudes against Northeast Indians in their heart, the more that the Northeast Indian people will feel alienated from the rest of India. Now, it's because of this that Northeasterners really feel alienated. And it's because of this that, like, yes, a lot of Northeast Indians really feel completely alienated and just completely separate. And China actually sometimes tries to use this in their favor to create chaos in northeastern regions. All right, guys, so that's all I have for you in this episode. I know I covered a lot and it's definitely a sensitive topic. I tried to come from a bunch of different angles just to shed some light on the northeastern Indians. But anyways, let me hear your thoughts and comments down below. What are your thoughts about this? Or Do you think the main reason that northeast, obviously I'm sure not the main reason, that's probably the wrong usage of the word. Um, is because Bangladesh being there and the fact that it um, it's... I can't... Obviously, United States, unless you consider, like... It'd be like, I guess, if there was something in between us and Maine. Hmm. Uh, or maybe Alaska. Alaska. But obviously, we... But Alaskans, unless you're native, like Native yeah, Americans... Yeah. The people who live in Alaska come from all over the yeah. place. So, so yeah. it's, it's not like we, no. We say not, India has a particular. They they've been there for a long time. Yeah, it would be a good example to have yeah. Alaska, if I guess Hawaii works, but they're not connected via land. They're so far yeah. away. If but you, if Native Alaskans, yeah, would be a good example. Yeah, like the Native American. I forget which tribe it is, but obviously they're big tribes up in Alaska. Yeah. Um, would be a good example if you had those native people yeah. that were still, if the United States government didn't wipe them out uh, <laughs> a yeah. long time ago. Yeah. I guess it would be a little more. But uh, since India has such a diverse topography with land and people, it's it's such an interesting dynamic. It is. And, it's, and sadly... I don't know why. There's such a small road to get there. Well. It is. And I, I don't know why this is because a lot of people will just say it's human nature. And I don't understand or even agree with that per se because I'm a human being and so are my parents. And I can't recall when I learned that people from different places, languages, or looks were different. I had to like be taught that other people think differently of other people mm. because to me... And to my parents, the only thing I ever knew about people who were different was that it was so interesting. That's all that ever was to me and always has been. Yeah. It, and, th and that on the beautiful side of things, whereas throughout history, there's been an enormous amount of ignorance. And what happens is anything that's different, people fear. Mm -hmm. And so they immediately kick against it, which I don't understand that, whether it's the way you look, the way you talk, or what you believe, that the initial response to that is to be afraid of it really doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Um, I know you say you didn't agree with it, but it, 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 if, if the majority throughout history and humans have done it, I 
guess that makes it human nature. Yeah. If the majority a, does it. A part of human nature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and to, we have, but we see we have choices that we can make to, to, to just because something comes to us, to, to us n- by nature doesn't mean that we of our will have to choose to act according to that nature. Yeah, but it, it's still human nature. That's true. It's just yeah. so strange because. Yeah. Oh, I agree. It's strange. Yeah. But I'm, it just I, doesn't make any sense. It, uh, I'm placing the argument of is it human nature to see somebody and think of them because I obviously I was well, I was raised the exact same way and, and I was <laughs> somebody with a different skin tone is and I, I think that nature is taught I don't think that it's it's a part of who we are and I, there's no way we'd ever get an answer to it I don't yeah. know that it's necessarily well, I definitely think racism is taught it's taught for sure 100% it's part of what you're taught as a kid and by example from the people around you you might naturally like, especially as a kid look at somebody and be like oh they're different like they mm-hmm. have so a person they've uh, a little kid of like let's say Leland Saw somebody that looked like a, either South Indian or uh, South African, right, or something like that, and look at it, and he might be like, "Oh, they're different." Yeah, uh, little kids do that out of so interest. Looking, like they see a, they see a, somebody who weighs four hundred pounds. That might be human nature, but yeah. the the discriminatory aspect. Exactly. Of it, I, and I don't know if that's what he was saying. I don't think he was saying, or maybe he was. I don't know if he was saying it's na- natural to discriminate if based off something different. It's that I wouldn't agree with. Obviously. I wouldn't agree with because, like, a four hundred pound person, a little kid, all three of mine did this, would say, "Mommy, why is that person so fat?" And that's out of interest. Mm-hmm. It's it's not out of a it's it's a well that they want to know why does or why is that person's skin so much darker or why is that person's face look like that? It's because wow that's different and they're actually wanting to know more about it. Yeah, not. I believe kids are taught, ha ha, you're fat. I think yeah. that's taught. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Taught or learned based off of your peers as yep. well. Yep, and what, yeah. how your parents treat people. Parents, you friends, betcha. family. And culturally, what you yeah. grow up in. So if you do, if you grow up in a country where a particular region of your country is treated a certain way, it becomes the norm. I mean, look at America and the way we've treated women. Yeah. And well. you name it, go down the list. <laughs> Uh, Any so, number of people. So, and I always go back to the story you've heard it a dozen times when we were when we were in India, right around the time that COVID was just starting to run rampant, and we had these girls who recognized us from the channel and came up to us and said that they had some people spit at them and say go back to China, but they were Assamese. But if you looked at them and you didn't know, you might think they were Chinese because the Northeast can look like that. But yeah. And what was odd about this, of the videos we've seen of his, this was the one that was the more, like, I felt like I, this had so much information, it was like shoving 10 Parley G in my mouth all at once. <laughs> it was really dry. It was a lot of content, but it was really dry. There was, like, no music. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it seemed like a lot of the points were similar. Similar. As well. Yeah. So it wasn't as fleshed out as some of his other Very videos, much so, right? yeah. But anyways, if there are other videos from... North, uh, Northeast India or other parts of India. Obviously, we always lo- like to learn stuff. So please send them our way if uh, they are good to react to. Let us know. And what the fuck is happening? Josh!